Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have DJ. DJ is from England in the UK. So let's see what DJ has to say. Enjoy the interview. Yes, Hello? yes, 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 you made it. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks so much for taking your time to do the interview with me. No, not at all. Not at all. Right. So just before we start the game, just tell me where are you from? I am um, originally I'm from Birmingham, but I live in London now. All right. And uh, what do you do for a living? Um, I'm a healthcare assistant for a sexual health clinic in London. Amazing. And what's what's um, in your opinion? What's the li you like the most about your job? Um, all the complex issues we get, and um, I got into this job because. Because um, obviously being um, a gay man um, and to the HIV crisis and stuff like that, it was, that really fascinated me um, to sort of see the struggle that gay, that gay people had to go through to get to where we are today and to sort of be a part, especially helping out with PrEP and the amazing advancements we've made now and to be a part of that is just, it was a dream of mine. So yeah, it was really good to keep back. Very good, very good. And um, what do you like the most about living in London? Living in London, I like the hustle, the bustle, everybody's here. Um, so, I, this is where I came to be free, do you know what I mean? When I moved here, I, just, I didn't know anybody when I moved here. I just up sticks, left where I was from. And I've made like a whole family for myself here. And um, yeah, I love it. I absolutely love living here. How long have you been living in London for? Um, coming up three years. Three years? Okay. Yeah. I've, I've been in London longer than you. I'm from Brazil originally, but I've been here for almost 15 years, can you imagine? Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> right, DJ, so welcome to William and the Magic Box. So. box here my best friend full of random fun questions okay so what are we going to do now i'm just gonna play a song just for us to get in the mood before the first question ready yes let's do it hope you like the music right today ready for the first question yes let's do it so the first question is um what is the funniest gift have you ever received the funniest gift I've ever received. Yes. Oh God. Um, do I have to be brutally honest? Totally, please. Okay, so um, I was 16 and my best friend bought me a gift and she wrapped it up and she gave it to my mum to put under the Christmas tree. Um, it was for Christmas. Um, so in my family, um, we all sort of open our presents like one at a time and sort of go around the room and do all of that. And then, so my mum gave me my best friend's gift, and I opened it, and it was a flesh jack. What's that flesh jack? It's what you use to masturbate with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's um, very funny. 16 years old. <laughs> yeah, 16. My friend bought me my first sex toy, and I opened it with my whole family. <laughs> Oh my lord, how was their, their reaction at the time? Um, I'd, well, I sort of passed it off as it's, oh, it must be a flashlight because it looks like like a flashlight. Right. And I think my mum cottoned on to what it was, and my <laughs> sister might have cottoned on. And um, yeah, I, I ran out of the room very quickly. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> were you out at this time? Were you already they knew you were already gay at the time or not? Yeah, no, I I was really fortunate in my family. I never I never came out. I never had a coming out story. Um, right. When I was tw uh, when I told my mum I lost my virginity, um, the first thing she said was, "It's not like you're gonna get anybody pregnant." <laughs> cool, <laughs> great. <laughs> right, let's get a second question for you, DJ. Let's do it. Right, let's get another question for you. Next question is, um, what is your, what is your idea of a perfect friendship? Perfect friendship is unconditional love. I have a perfect friendship. Um, she's my best friend in the world, Katie. Um, we met each. I lived in Devon for five years. We met there. Um, 
I've lived away from Death Room for about, oh, coming up six years now. Um, and we, we are still just as close. I helped, um, I helped her give birth to her daughter. Um, I was a birth partner. Um, we made a conscious effort to twice a year meet up in London. This is when I was living in Birmingham. Um, we'd meet up in London and we would just have the craziest nights out. It would be like all those nights out you have with your friends that you live close to in one weekend. And we would, yeah, the debauchery we would get up to is just, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> um, she's, she's still living in London? Uh, she lives She lives in Devon. I live in London now. I moved here because of when we used to meet up here and I fell in love with it so much that I was just like, I want to live there. Um, so yeah, it's because of her that I live here. But she's, she's my ride or die. She's unconditional love. What's her name again, Chris? Katie. Katie, sorry, Katie. Cool. Great. Let's get another question for you. Let's, Let's do it. Go. All right. Just before the next question, and in your opinion, what's the most challenging part of living in London? Um, at the moment, coronavirus. Um, <laughs> but that's a challenge for everybody. Um, oh, I don't know. I think, um, so I've got a friend that I've known for a few years now, and um, she lives over east. Um, she lives in Island Gardens. I live in Vauxhall. You'd think it, would, it was easy to go and see each other, but everyone's just so busy with their lives. And because, you know, it's such a, a fast paced city that I've seen her like three times since I've lived here. Oh, wow. Um, not much at all. Um, I mean, we've, we've linked up like when we've both gone back to Devon or something like that. Um, but I probably see her more in Devon than I did here. I see. It's, uh, by the way, you are just my neighbor. I just live in, in Stratton Hill, not far from you. So. Oh my God. Yeah, very close. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. <laughs> right, let's get another question for you. Um, who was your favorite teacher at school and why you consider that? Uh, my favourite teacher was my drama teacher, Miss Clegg. Um, shout out to Miss Clegg. Um, she was my drama teacher. Um, she gave me all the confidence I've got now to this day. She um, she always knew that I was gay, um, especially in school when obviously you're trying to hide it a bit in school. I mean, I was blessed with my family, but I grew up on a council estate in Birmingham, so I hid it somehow. Um, but yeah, she always knew and she always made me feel safe and that I've got to talk to her and she always made me feel accepted for who I am. And yeah, she's a massive part in the confidence I have today, which is a lot. <laughs> good, very good. Good for her. <laughs> good. <laughs> Another question. Right, Jay, let's get another question for you. Next oh. question is, tell us about your first kiss and your first love. First kiss and my first love. My first kiss, I was four years old. Wow. Um, yeah, I know. So we was um, playing kiss chase in nursery, um, <laughs> like Christmas school, um, and all the boys had to chase the girls, and I ran after the boys. And the teacher was going, no, DJ, you can't run after the boy. And I grabbed the boy and I kissed him. She said, can't, you can't run after the boys, you need to run after the girls. And I said, but I want to run after the boys. I don't want to run after the girls. <laughs> so, yeah. And my first love wasn't that long ago, actually. Um, I've only ever been in one relationship. Um, and we got together when I was 26. Um, and he was the love of my life. Um, oh. we just, yeah, we broke up, um, mutual circumstances, but it has a very happy ending. He said to me at the beginning of our relationship that our friendship was the most important thing to protect, and our relationship on top of that is the bonus. Um, so when it feels like our friendship is being damaged by our relationship, it's time to end the relationship, and he's my best friend to this day. Amazing, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful. I was, I, was, I was about to ask if you agree with that, but of course you do. You just mentioned it's your best friend, so that's that's what, yeah. what matters. That's good. Right, another question for you. Right, 
right, so since you've been living in London, you always lived in Vauxhall or you've been living in different parts? So I was going to say this earlier when you said you live in Stratton Hill. And I used to live in Clapham Hill. Oh. Ah, okay. You know, um, you know where the McDonald's is? In Clapham South. Um, I'm, 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 actually, I'm just, uh, I've just moved to here for four months ago, so I'm new in the area as well, so I don't know. I, I've been clapping, but okay, I'm not sure. It's at the top, sure. of, it's the top of Stratham Hill onto Brixton Hill. I literally live there, so it's, very, it's like five minutes away from um, Stratham Hill. Um, okay. But Clapham, yeah. So I live in what's called the Gay Triangle of London, which is Clapham, Brixton, and Vauxhall. Vauxhall. Yeah, Clapham, Brixton, Vauxhall, the Gay oh. Triangle. Cool. Next question is, um, what does happiness mean to you? Happiness? Um, being at one with yourself, loving yourself, um, I think that's true happiness. When, when you're at peace with yourself, you can be at peace with with everything else, nothing, nothing gets you, nothing bothers you. Um, you know, I think I've been truly happy in my life. Um, not always, um, but I think the times when I was so happy is just when I felt good in myself and complete. Yeah. Very good. Good. Another question. Okay, um, who is the most influential person in your life? My mum, 100%. My mum is, she's an angel. She is just, I've never known a woman like it. I was thinking about this the other day, actually. My mum, had, by the time she was 25, my mum had three kids, biologically, and also went to court for two years and fought to get the rights to her niece and nephew because they was in a very bad home situation. She was 25 and I was thinking at 25 I was in and I could toy with doing things I probably should not do. Um, and just didn't have the sense that she had. But then on top of all that we all grew up, we all left home and when we all left home she then adopted twins Wow. Applied to be a, applied to be a foster carer, adopted another baby boy, and still foster cares on top of it. She's oh, just, oh wow! Just a, she's just a, a miracle of a person. I love my mom so much. That's for sure. That's for sure. Wow! Thanks for sharing that. That's beautiful. Yeah. Another one. Let's do it. Good, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question is, what makes you feel really angry? Um, betrayal. Um, I'm a very, I'm a very trusting person, sometimes to my own fault. Um, I think everyone deserves a level of trust when you meet them, a level of respect when you meet them. And, and when I give, my heart to somebody like especially like friendship my friendships are really important to me um especially yeah um so when they betray that trust or they turn out to be somebody toxic or they're using you and you know it takes a long time to sort of process that um because you know your friends become your family so yeah that <laughs> oh and um do you remember the last time when you feel that angry? It's been a while ago when you feel like that feeling? When I felt that angry, um, yeah. Yeah, so I had a falling out with um, one of my closest friends. And mm -hmm. um, it got to a place, but I'm one of those people that like, once I'm done, I'm done. Like, I'm not trying to get even, I'm not trying to get angry, I'm not trying to start an argument. Once I'm done, I'm done. I will just delete you, you'll be deleted life and I will never speak to you again and I'll cool. move on and that'll be fine. Right, cool, let's get another question. I've done grudges, it causes lines. <laughs> <laughs> another question for you. Right, DJ, next question for you is, um, what can make you feel, um, sorry, what can make you cry and what can make you feel really happy? Um, 
not a lot makes me cry. Um, there is two films in the world that make me cry. One's called A Beautiful Thing and one's called Weekend. Um, there are two gay movies, um, both based in Europe, uh, based in England. One's based in East End of like, South London, I think, and the other one's based in Nottingham. And they are just the most beautiful, heart wrenching, lo lovely, true to life story. Um, and I sob every time I watch them. <laughs> so that makes you cry, those movies? Uh, yes. And what can make you really happy? Um, I like giving people stuff. <laughs> um, I like I like making other people happy. That's what makes me happy. Um, so giving people stuff, yeah. Just making other people happy, doing things for other people makes me happy. And okay. see, yeah, yeah. When they're happy, that makes me happy. That's good. What what is your star sign? I'm a Taurus. Taurus. Mm. My best, actually, one of my best friends who lives in Holland. He's Taurus. Very organized. Very tight, organized. I know. <laughs> Another very, headstrong. very headstrong, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Another one. I can't wait for June to get things back to normal again so I can go out and dance. Stop! Stop! I was just saying to a friend like yesterday, like how much I miss dancing, dancing in the street and dancing in clubs and on tables. And, yeah, um. <laughs> I received a message yesterday. Somebody sent me a message saying that um, I think the gay prize is going to be in, in uh, September. Yeah. Amazing. Right, next question is um, what's your favorite weekend activity? Um, it was going, um, going clubbing. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> that was. Um, I love dressing up and getting ready with my friends and all meeting up after a, a stressful week and coming around to someone's house and getting ready to get back, hitting the clubs. That was my activity, that was my hobby. So then, a boring person, I like hobbies. <laughs> it's going to go back soon for sure. Soon, yeah. soon, soon. Soon, soon. <laughs> Very good. Right, today I have three questions left for you, okay? Okay. Let's do it. For the next question, uh, tell me what do you miss the most about Birmingham? Uh, ooh, my best friend Lindsay. Apart from my mum, obviously. Of course. <laughs> and my family. Um, I would give my mum a big shout out. So, my best friend Lindsay. Um, she's my oldest friend. Um, I'm 27 years old, and I can handle my heart say I've had a best friend for 26 years of my life. Wow. Yeah, which is, which is, yeah, I've known a gift. That. That's a genuine gift. It is, it is a genuine gift. Um, and her friendship means the world to me. I love that girl so much. Very good, very good. Okay, um, what would be the title of your memoir? Um, Sex in Strange Places. Tell me about it a little bit. Why? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've always been very sex positive, I'll put it that way. Um, I've always been interested in sex from quite a young age. Um, and yeah, sex has just been a massive part of my life. Um, through bad times and good times. Um, and of course, bad times and good times. Um, so yeah, it'll be, it'll be sex and strength play. It's... Very good, 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 I like that. Two questions left. Let's do it. Okay, next question is um, What has been the happiest point of your life? Um, I think it was the day I moved to London, actually. Um, a little bit of context. I I was homeless at a time in my life, um, and then I had twenty five grand. Went, like straight after for that, and then I lost it all, and I was homeless again. Um, and then I had a massive breakdown, 
um, and it took me a long time to be happy and I never thought I'd get to a place where I just thought I'd just live and just survive um, but then London was always just like a dream of mine and then the day I moved was the day I realised that I've made a dream come true and I know it's kind of a small dream and to some it's just like it's just another city or whatever but for me that was it was such a big thing to do at that time that to be able to do that I've just yeah I, I think I cried actually on the train out of happiness oh that's sweet <laughs> yeah um yeah that's beautiful yeah. I think it's beautiful I think it's just a beautiful dream doesn't doesn't mean you know what I mean there's no uh, I mean when you dream about something it doesn't matter it's a dream you know exactly there's no limits to dreams I like, of course what matters to you really very good very good ready for the last one I am ready for the last one let's <laughs> do it <laughs> <laughs> right let's get the last question for you dj next question last question is um which question you wouldn't have an answer for what question i wouldn't have an answer for well that was for everything me <laughs> or i can put this question a different way if you would like to yes Right, I will ask you, um, which question would you like to be asked? Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, um, are you okay? <laughs> and what would be your answer for that? Today? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm really good. Really yeah? Good. Very good, very good. Right, DJ, so it's not the end yet. Okay, let's play now the quick thinking game. So I'm going to give away some words and just tell me one word that comes to your mind, okay? Okay, right. Let's start with friendship. Love. Money. Love. Family. Love. And how about love? How about love? If I say love, what comes to your mind? Family. Okay, life. Hard. Sex. Love. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Politics. A shambles. Okay. Um, religion. I'm trustworthy. Fear. Child. Okay. Desire. Sex. Regrets. <laughs> Success. Happiness. Okay. Wish. Three. Um. And if I say Birmingham, one word. Birmingham. Yeah. Past. And the last one, London. Future. Good. Very good. Right, so let's pretend I'm going to meet your um, your close uh, closest friend, Katie, and I'm going to ask Katie, define uh, DJ one positive word and one negative word only. What, which um, words should define you? Katie would say, I, uh, I'll get this wrong, she's gonna kill me. Um, what would Katie say? Positive word about me. It's it's there, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's like um when you can just be completely open with somebody. Um trust. Trust, yeah. Trust. Okay, I, and the neg the, neg the negative one? Selfish. <laughs> Interesting. And if I would ask the same question to your lovely mum, what should say? Oh, Mum would say, love. Yeah, and I, I love everything. Um, negative. Oh, bitch. <laughs> no. Um, no, what my mum says is a negative. Sad. Sad. Oh, right. Right, let's play now. DJ in the magic box and you can ask me a question, okay? But before that, let's play the music one more time. Yes. Okay. You can 
ask me a question now. Hey, if you had one piece of advice to give your younger self, what would it be? I like this question. I like this question. Um, I think I'll tell myself. Um, right. So through your life in the future, you're going to, you're going to go through very tough times sometimes, and you're going to feel like that uh, this feeling is going to be forever. But it won't. Uh, you it will pass somehow. It will pass somehow, and you get a, um, you learn a lesson from that. But you're gonna realize that just in the future. You're not gonna see the message straight away when it happens. But for sure, in the future, you're gonna look back and you're gonna go like, now I understand why I went through that tough time at the time when I, I it it happened. Um, and also tell myself that um, it hap it will be it, it will happen as well the same uh, when you're gonna be very happy. Gonna go through happy times, and uh, you're gonna realize as well in the future when you look back, and you're gonna realize why you were happy at the time and which message it brought to you. So, put that together. I would say just enjoy the moment. Enjoy. When you are sad, it's gonna be hard, but try to enjoy the moment as well because it's it's, it's still is important as well to make to for you to learn and to grow and to learn lessons. At the same time as well, when you're happy, enjoy the moment because it's, it's not going to be forever again, but enjoy the moment because it, it will uh, give you memories, it will give you memories and good feeling. So, enjoy both times. I think both of time counts in life and uh, is necessary, both of the time, the sad time and the happy time, both of them they are necessary to make the people who you are. I think it will be just happiness, we would be bored, I think everyone will be bored and we don't learn anything. And, um, and in the same, the same way as well as sad, I think you we'll, don't we'll do anything being sad. So I think everything counts in life. You're gonna have like feelings, you should own them. Own your feelings. Absolutely, absolutely. Never fight against your feelings. Just feel it, feel it. You know, it's not easy. And just feel it and try to, don't try to understand. Just live the moment and uh, you will understand in the future. DJ, did you have a good time? I've loved it. This has been really sweet. Thank you. I'm sorry if I'm, I kept repeating myself. It's just no. what came to my head. You don't need to, no, you don't need to be sorry. It's just about being yourself. I think the whole show is about being yourself. There are not right or wrong answers. It's just different point of views, just where you feel what you are. And that's it. I think the whole point of the show is about that. They're not right or wrong. Yeah. Okay. But just before you go, if you just can share a positive message or a positive quote, something that inspires you. Do you know what? I've actually got um, something tattooed on my chest. Um, it's I was obsessed with this actor, James Dean, um, from the 50s. Um, I won't go into all of that, but his favourite book was The Little Prince. Um, and his favorite quote out of that book was, what is essential is invisible to the eye. Hmm, I like this. Yeah. So whatever's invisible, things like love, friendship, they're essential, they're invisible. <laughs> totally agree with you, totally agree with you. Bye, Dede, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for the interview. And, and um, I might see you sometime in London, you know, like a party somewhere, that's for sure. Definitely. Bumping, nice with, bumping heads in Soho, you are right? <laughs> yes, I will for sure, I will for sure, and you are my neighbour, you know what I mean, Vox, oh my god, just next door there, so we can organise something, <laughs> I'd like to do a party with you, dancing, that's what you want to I'll tell you out in Vox, so you'll love it, you'll love it here. Yes, I know Vox, I've been in so many clubs there, I know what Vox like, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I live behind fire, so... <laughs> Oops, you're in the right spot. <laughs> right in the right spot. <laughs> DJ, it was a pleasure. Thanks so much. Okay, no, thank all the best. You, thank okay. you. And I'll keep in touch with you, okay? I'll keep definitely, in touch. definitely. Take Bye, care. Bye. Bye. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, to share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show and I see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.